Hi, welcome back to Warrior Beauty. Today I have Randy, my husband, with me and my caregiver. And he's going to talk to you about a few things that have to do with giving care to someone who has melanoma and stage 4 cancer, any cancer. And um, here he is. Hey everybody, first I'd just like to say Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Um, hope you had a wonderful weekend. A little different Mother's Day with all the stay-at-home madness going on and the COVID-19 scare and pandemic. So I just want to, I hope you had a, had a great Mother's Day. Uh, Christina asked me to do this video talking about caregivers and there's uh, several different points that I kind of wanted to touch on. Um, first and foremost is the COVID-19 thing. Um, no matter how you feel about COVID-19, what your stance is, uh, what your beliefs are, um, it's a very real pandemic and uh, if, if it were just me out there right now, um, I would be responsible. I would stay home as much as possible, but when I went out, I don't think I would be wearing gloves and a mask. Um, because I've worked in the public sector for 23 years and been exposed to way more worse, way more contagious, more lethal things than COVID-19 uh, flu pandemic. So if it was just me, uh, no big deal. I mean, even if I came down with it and got the flu, um, my body could handle it and, um, you know, it would just, I'd build immunity to it. However, Having my wife here, who is in a uh, at-risk category because of the cancer and because of the treatment she receives, I, I can't afford to do that. I do not want her to get sick with the last thing she needs is to deal with uh, potentially lethal uh, flu virus or, or something that's going to make her very sick and hinder her treatments, which are going very, very well. We're so blessed. Um, that MD Anderson, we're, we moved to Texas, we're here, uh, we're going to treatment every two weeks at MD Anderson. Um, I kind of want to talk a little bit about that later because the COVID-19 has affected that as well, but we're, we're very blessed to have what we have and to be able to be here and be, have MD Anderson have this clinical trial that's working out so well. I would not want to do anything to jeopardize that. So for me, when I go out to the store, I I, I go only when needed. I don't make extra trips anywhere. Uh, if I'm gonna pick up some food, I go through a drive-through, stay in the car, use hand sanitizer. At the gas station, I wear gloves and then use hand sanitizer afterwards. If I'm going to the Walmart for groceries or whatever, it's convenient because there's one by us. Um, they are being very responsible in here, in here in Texas by requiring social distancing, six feet apart, and uh, recommending gloves and masks, not requiring it. So for those who want to, those who don't, um, I, I wear a mask every single time and gloves every single time I go. I've gotten some looks from mainly other guys who are like, you know, like what's this dude, big dude wearing a mask for? And you know, um, you know, people have their different opinions about this virus and their freedoms and so be it. Um, like I said, if it were just me, I'd be that guy walking around with no mask or no gloves. I, I mean, I, I'm not afraid of the, the virus and I know my body could handle it because I'm a healthy guy. Anyways, uh, but be that as it may, I, I very, uh, take very, very serious precautions, safety precautions. I, I would urge you, if you're a caregiver to someone in this situation, to do the same thing. Take it serious. Don't bring anything home with you. Don't take that risk of getting your loved ones sick with this COVID-19 crap. Um, they're going through enough. They're going through enough. They don't need to deal with the extra, extra sickness. And they definitely don't need anything that might jeopardize treatment if they're going through treatment. So three days away from you is enough. If it had to be like weeks. Or... Yeah. So then that's the and the other thing with COVID-19 is when she goes in for treatment, they're not allowing any guests at this time, which is. I get it, I understand, they're, I mean, they, they've been really, really responsible at the hospital ensuring the safety of their patients, and it's a cancer center, so they have cancer patients, they're, all the people that walk in there are at risk to begin with, so they have a screening station where they check your temperature, 
blood pressure, um, ask you if you had a fever, a cough, they go through all that and they do not allow any visitors, it's only the patients. So I'm super grateful that they're open, that they are continuing to do business, that they're taking these safety precautions for their patients, that my wife is able to receive her treatments on time without interruption, that the doctors, the nurses are all being super safety con conscious and taking all the necessary precautions to make sure their patients stay as well as they can and, and eliminate this COVID-19, flatten the curve, so to speak, and keep their patients safe. But it has been hard on me to not be able to go with my wife because before this COVID-19 crap, I was there with her every single time. There was only one time that I wasn't able to go and I had the comfort of knowing that her daughter was with her. Her daughter made the trip. Uh, I had some doctor's appointments. I think we discussed that in a prior video that we, I couldn't go make the trip here when we were still flying back and forth from California to Texas. Um, and that was hard. Even just knowing that her daughter was there and I couldn't be there, it was it, the unknowing, uh, wondering if she's okay. Because when I go, I like to take care of everything that I can to assist the nurses and doctors uh, with their duties to make their jobs easier. I take care of my wife the best that I can, keeping the room clean, keeping it sanitary, keeping, if she needs anything, I'm there to run and get it, to call a nurse, to talk to the care team. Kind of like a, just a, a care manager when I'm there for her and a spokesperson. Um, a lot of times she's resting and asleep. A lot of times she needs rest and sleep and everybody knows hospitals are for healing, not for resting. You can't really sleep in there. So I try to advocate for her when I'm there to help her rest and do things and, and just be her voice and I haven't been able to do that. So that's been very frustrating for me. I've had to um, kind of adapt with that because that, that, that's... It sucks. I, I'm a, I guess, I don't know, I'm an A-type personality and I like to be there um, helping and being a part of her care team and being her advocate when she's there. And So, I mean, texting is, is fine. We text each other often while she's in there. We call and we FaceTime each other on, on video. So that's all helpful. Thank God for modern technology that we're able to do that. But it's just not the same as being there. Um, so that's kind of added some stress to an already stressful situation of just having to pull up to the hospital, dump her off, wish her luck, and then I don't get to see her again for two days. Um, she goes in typically around noon on the first day of treatment, and then she's there all day the next day, and then half a day. So it's two full days split up over three days. Um, I hate that middle day. I hate it. Um, time drags. I try and find stuff to do, keep busy with the puppies here. And um, But I told her, I just wish we could just, I know it's a day in the life that we have and time is precious, but I, I don't know. I wish we could just fast forward over that day. Um, Sometimes that's my scan day too. So I'm in scans and he knows I'm like inside some machine the whole day. Yeah. And some of those scans can be very stressful on her. And she needs to take things to help her relax because of just the feeling of claustrophobia and anxiety, scanxiety. It's very real and it's hard. And it's just helpful for her knowing I'm there, even if I'm just a door away or in the next room. But because if a really crazy apocalypse happened, you'd at least pop me out of the machine, right? You'd break yes. me out. I bust down the door and get you out of there and we hole up in the cafeteria and live off hospital food for the rest of our days. No. But <laughs> anyways, that it's hard. It's hard just shoving her out the door and wishing her luck and then coming all the way back home. Um, it's not all the way, it's a short drive, but a 45 minute drive from here to Houston. Uh, lately the traffic's been wonderful so it's been like a 35 minute drive uh, which is kind of nice and that's not gonna last forever um yeah so that part of it has been a challenge difficult but we'll get through it we'll get through it it's just um part of the times part of this COVID-19 crap 
Uh, I did get her this mask though that I, I really am very, very pleased with. Um, I, I bought it before March. I wanna say just after we moved to Texas, early, early March, I went on Amazon and I got this mask. Um, it's for, uh, it's an N95 mask rated because it's got a dual filter. It's got the inside removable filter here. Um, I bought, I don't know, like 25 of these. And then it's got these um, breathing, you would have to actually take these off, but these are um, breathing filters that help get your uh, moist breath away from the mask. And then it filters particulates on the way back in. And it's got this nose clip and it's got the over the ear and then a nice Velcro strap that I got her. Um, I don't know if they're if they're making these right now, if they're discontinued. Last time I looked, um, there were none available. So I luckily got her one of these early enough because she's been required to wear this every time she's at the hospital in and out. Um, and um, I'm just, I feel better, safer than her wearing this, than her just having a regular surgical mask. So. Um, for those of you out there who have access to these, I really recommend them. Um, are they comfortable? I mean, yeah, it's very comfortable and I think that the neck strap helps with the ear strain because people are getting their ears, a lot of the nurses even had right. redness and sore over their ears. And it helps to breathe too. I noticed um, my other cloth masks and then even the ones in the hospital, on a white. Um, <laughs> Uh, are hard to breathe through. You yeah. feel, like you said, that moistness and the heat. But with this one, I don't. So I don't have one of these. I, I got two for her that she wears and interchanges. Um, once you take the filter out and take the plastic pieces off, it's washable. So I wash it on high temperature as possible and dry it on high temperature because heat is supposed to kill these viruses. And then I use antibacterial laundry soap. Um, which is another thing, when I come home from the store, I make sure that I uh, immediately disrobe. Um, I have shoes that I leave in the garage because I don't want to track the stuff in. Um, and I, I don't know, I just try and take a lot of safety precautions. Um, our washroom is right across from the garage door, so I back the car in, unload the groceries, disrobe all the clothes. Um, they go into the washer on high heat, antibacterial soap, and. Um, that way I'm not carrying around germs on my clothing. Um, and I, when I'm out, I don't touch my phone at all. And my phone stays in my pocket. Um, and we have um, the Purell hand sanitizer in the car that we use. Um, yeah, just so a lot of precautions. Anyways, I was saying I don't have one of these masks. I either wear the surgical mask or I wear an, the neck gaither that I pull up and over. And I notice by the time that I'm done grocery shopping, there is uh, trapped moisture in those masks. It's hard to breathe. Uh, I don't feel like they vent well. I don't know how many particulates they block. I'm, I'm trying to be as safe as possible, but um, they're not great. They're honestly not great. And I, I don't know if they, like afterwards, I notice that I feel congested um, because I'm probably breathing in my own carbon dioxide for yeah, however healthy. long. Right. So I wear them to protect what's coming in, but it blocks what's going out, and that's not healthy. So um, I really recommend these. If you can get a hold of these, these are fantastic. And I've, um, the doctors at MD Anderson have actually asked her, the nurses and doctors, about it because, um, A, she looks cool. Um, she looks like a um, Mortal Kombat character, like she could be a, uh, in a video game, which is really, really cool. Um, but more importantly and more seriously, um, they work really well and they're very comfortable. And so um, the doctors at MD Anderson and nurses have asked her about it. So, yeah, I recommend those. If you can get, get one. What else? Taking care of yourself when you're a caregiver. Mm. This one's hard, and I honestly, admittedly, am not great at it. I do the best I can. Um, I have had some health issues, and uh, they are probably related to stress, I'm not sure. Um, before we left California, I had some uh, GI bleed that they never found. Did a couple of different kind of endoscopies, colonoscopy, every scopy you can think of, and they never found anything. 
Um, I was anemic. I had to be hospitalized for four, day, four days because of that. Um, the bleed caused my iron levels to crash and I needed uh, all the way to blood transfusion and three separate iron infusions. Um, so I'm trying to take care of myself. Um, I was fortunate enough to be able to retire early, to be able to take care of her. Not everyone is able to do that out there. Not everyone has that ability to just stop working and take care of your loved one full time. And I can attest to how difficult it was working in a stressful job and having your loved one, your dearest loved one, go through stage four cancer and the treatments and the scans and the bad news and the good news and the roller coaster ride that it's been, the stress level is just incredible for both of us. So if you're working day to day out there or if you're working from home because of this COVID-19, I mean, you still need to, to uh, focus on your job, um, which is sometimes difficult to do with um, your loved one being ill and fighting cancer and the struggles that are like a gigantic mountain there. Um, and I'm ambulatory, and I'm... Right. So right. Not everyone is. Right. In fact, she just cooked an amazing meatloaf and mashed potatoes for <laughs> using our new air fryer. It was good. Bomb. Really good. Um, so, yeah, I mean, she's not like an invalid, not able to take care of herself, but there's still a lot of things that... I normally wouldn't do around here that I that I'm doing um, you know I've always cooked and cleaned and done laundry and stuff and um, but I try and pick up more of that especially now that I'm retired I, I try and pick up more of that and the yard work inside out and stuff um, but getting back to the taking care of yourself part if you don't take care of yourself you, there's no way you can take care of your loved one there was not one time, not one moment that I can recall that was more stressful than when I was in the hospital because those four days, I wasn't able to take care of her. Luckily, luckily, and thank God, her cousin Robin, hey Robin, uh, Rock and Robin came to visit her from Georgia and the day before I got ill and went into the hospital and was admitted, um, she arrived. And she was able to stay with Christina the whole time. Um, and then right at the tail end of that, my sister, uh, Heather, Hi, Heather, from Montana flew in unexpectedly, and she helped as well. So I had some really good family support. Christina had some really good family support. But there has not been a time where I felt more frustrated and more angry um, that I was not able to be there for her, take care of her than when I was down. And then even after that, I went through a bunch of different tests and um, just the feeling of not being able to be strong and not being able to feel, to be what I feel Christina needs for support, for, for moral support, for physical support, for, you know, the whole shebang. I couldn't, I couldn't do it for a while, so. I was there for you, too. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, wasn't it like a day, like you came home and we had, what, 24 hours and then my brain surgery for the Amaya? Uh, I had to like talk them into releasing me. Um, yeah, and it was late at night by the time they got around to releasing me. And the very next day you went into surgery, the, the very next morning. Day, yeah. yeah, so. I think I got released from the hospital at like 8 p.m. I was so and anxious. And then we went to the other hospital where I was having that done. So you're still at for like four in the morning. So it was, yeah, and, and that was a long Talk day. About stress and trying to feel better. Crazy. So, yeah, that was a crazy time. Anyways, whole point of that story is caretakers need to take care of themselves. Um, don't put your dental visits aside don't put your doctor's visits aside make sure you're taking your medications make sure you're taking vitamins make sure you're eating well uh, make sure you're sleeping good i i to this day i still struggle with insomnia that i have to talk to my doctor about and we're 
kind of working through some different medications to try and help me with my insomnia. I've never had problems sleeping. I worked graveyards for like 12 years and would sleep soundly through the day and work all night. I've never had a problem with sleeping until all this started up and the stress and anxiety and just, I don't, I had a hard time falling asleep, had a hard time staying asleep, still kind of struggling with it. I think I found a little bit of a balance um, with some of these medications that the doctor's helping me with, but um, get your sleep. Find a way to get the get your rest when you can because um, when your loved one needs you and, and you need to be there, if you're not healthy, you can't. And like I said, for me, that was the most frustrating time through all this cancer stuff is when I felt, you always feel kind of helpless and as a man, not being able to, to um, protect your loved one from all this, to take the hurt, the cancer away, not to be able to protect them, to do something, anything to make it all better. As a man, that's what you want to do is protect your wife. When you're sick as a man and you you can't do any of that, even, even the little things that help you feel better on the daily basis, like Right, right now, Christina's body is NED, which is a miracle in itself and, and completely wonderful. Um, but even before that, the, the little things that I did around here to help her to um, even just uh, rubbing stuff in her hair to help it grow, um, working. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Naomi for, the, for, Naomi, for the stuff. That was wonderful. Um, any little thing that I could do that would help out, bring her water, um, that make, makes me feel better. It makes me feel like I'm doing something. It makes me feel like I'm engaged in her healing process and, and connecting with her um, to help her. And as a man, that's what I feel like I need to do as a protector, as a provider, that type of thing. Um, so be you a, a male or female um, care, Taker, it's it's so important that you take care of yourself um, and all that means for you, whatever that means for you. Um, take a minute to to breathe, um, do some yoga, do some meditation, pray. Um, we do it together. Yeah. Sometimes we need to do more of that, I think. Yeah, definitely. Because that puts stress on the cancer patient too. Not that you did that on purpose or anything it was completely out of our control just like everything else but when you're down and they're like you know my heart like fell out of my body i could <laughs> yeah i need my big strong hubby by my side yeah. yeah i'm glad you took the steps to take care of yourself and you still are so. yeah I Still a work in progress. I, I got a new doctor here in Texas, and we're we're working on stuff. My anemia has gotten better, thank God. Um, my iron levels are up above 15 now, which at one point they were like below seven, below six. So uh, yeah, it got it got bad for a minute there. Um, but yeah, just I mean, take a break for yourself. I love music. Um, I have music on all the time here at the house, or. Um, if I need a break or something, um, I just I go outside, drink a cup of coffee, and put music on. Or you know, she's my best friend, and I, there's no one that I would rather be uh, stay at home quarantined with. Stuck with. Yeah. So, <laughs> I I mean, it's it hasn't been really that hard, honestly. The quarantine for us because we're such home bodies to begin with, and and. We love so this is our first being with time each other. Having kids living with us too, yeah. ever. So this is our belated honeymoon. Yeah. Our COVID cancer honeymoon. <laughs> um. Uh, so I mean, it's not like we're going stir crazy together. It's really all that. I mean, other than the safety precautions I take when I go out, and I probably go out a lot less than I did before, but. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's, it's not too bad for us. Um, we keep each other entertained. Yeah. Um, play games. Color together. Seriously. Like, it's therapeutic, man. It's yeah. not bad. Find a, pencils. Find an adult coloring book and, and 
We did that a few times. We played cards, some epic games of gin rummy, and um, what else? I mean, we watch our shows together. Play with the puppies. They keep puppies, us busy. We're yeah. puppy parents. Our fur babies so. require a lot of attention, and they're great for de-stressing and just cuddling with and playing and, and now make you happy. Bird and squirrel watching. I bought a squirrel feeder, and those they're going nuts. They've emptied it twice already <laughs> in two days. I'm gonna go broke just feeding squirrels. How, like, <laughs> those greedy little boogers. And it's cute because there's little squall, uh, squirrel paw prints all over the, the plexiglass in the front. And anyways, um, so yeah, we we were bought a hummingbird feeder. We've been watching the hummingbirds, just stuff to help us with our mental health and relaxing and de stressing. And um, yeah, you just gotta find ways to do that. Sunday was Mother's Day, and we kind of spent all day um, worshiping and, and watching uh, different pastors, um, T.D. Jakes and um, the Lakewood pastor. What, what's the pastor's name? I think of his name right now, too. Right here in Houston. Um, oh, my gosh. Anyways. We'll think of it. Yeah. Very world-renowned pastor, very well-known, uh, Lakewood Church here. Yeah, if you if you want to remind us in the comments, feel free to, to, to do <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, they're like everybody knows. But anyway, so we, that's how we spent Sunday. We all day um, we listened to some worship concerts, um, preachers, different preachers speaking, and for us, that's what we needed to do for that day, and it was cool. Absolutely. I really enjoyed it. Um, so yeah, find find things that work for you and de-stress both for the cancer patient and the caretaker that's important that's important um, physical health as well as spiritual and mental health um, it's a trifecta and if you don't care, take care of one the other two start to deteriorate so you gotta take care of the whole spectrum mental spiritual and physical so what else is there anything else mm -hmm. So. Yeah, she's been asking me to do this for a little while and just through circumstances or whatever we, we today's a day so um, <laughs> I hope you can take Something away from this through our experiences. That's why we share um, Everybody's different everybody's gonna have their own unique challenges their own unique viewpoints their own unique um, personalities and likes and dislikes and so um, and we don't share this to say that um, we're better than anyone or we're, our way is the right way or it's it's just if you take one little thing out of it and it helps you then it was worth the uh, 30 minutes we spent talking to you and that's the only reason we do it is to raise awareness for melanoma pre prevent melanoma um, talk you through stage 4 cancer dealing with melanoma and the, from the caretaker's perspective, from the husband's perspective, from the wife's view, um, there's a lot of different viewpoints in there. And, and like I said, just if you can take anything, then it's worth our time. And we're more than happy to share with you. Yeah. We're open books. So that's why we are doing this. That's why the channel even exists. So if you'd like to subscribe and follow us on this crazy journey, click like and subscribe. And we will see you. <laughs> on the next video. Bye. Peace. Take care. God bless.